Hi, this is Roger Schlitter. Um, today's video is, is about your banker buddy. Um, and, and it's kind of like, how did you meet your loan officer uh, at the bank? Um, there's a number of ways you could have done that. Um, you could have walked into the bank and asked about a business loan, but those are far and in between. Um, I've been a loan officer and you don't get many that walk in the bank. You usually have to go out and beat the bushes, um, you know, to find new, new, uh, new borrowers. Um, so anyway, I bet you met him in one of three ways. Number one, he visited your business. Number two, he called you on the phone. Uh, number three, he was referred to you by somebody you know. Um, and that's kind of the best way. Um, we usually try to, you know, find people, uh, just say, hey, who else do you know in business that, that would need a loan or, or that, you know, would want to, you know, talk to a bank. And, and those come, you know, those are usually your better better leads, those the referrals that come from somebody you know. Um, so anyway, if you're a good account for the bank, um, and that is you have loans, uh, potential to borrow in the future, um, or you have cash in the bank, or, or you run a lot of the cash through the bank, uh, the loan officer may invite you out, you know, to dinner, or a dinner and a play, or maybe a sporting event, and dinner and drinks. Um, you know, I mean, you'll, you'll be on top of the world, man. Um, you know, you'll be grateful, and the two of you will get along famously. I guarantee it. Really. Um, so anyway, you'll, you'll, you'll be the best of buddies. Maybe I went over a little, a little over the top on that one. Anyway, uh, loan officers are likable people. Uh, that's why they're hired as loan officers. Um, and they'll cater to you and your business. Uh, banks, at banks I worked at, it was not unusual uh, to take clients or potential clients um, to baseball or hockey games, um, you know, usually with a dinner proceeding. Um, you know, banks get tickets to all sorts of venues. Um, you know, they get them for, for sporting events. They get them for plays. Uh, we even had events at the art museum, uh, which was kind of a big deal. Um, and, and you or your banker buddies will, will be the best of friends. I mean, you really will. I mean, you'll, you'll think he's a great guy. And, and he'll think you're a great guy until your company poses a risk to the bank. And at that point, you know, uh, there could be problems. I mean, you know, it could be just a, a soft year in sales or a particular problem in your business uh, that, that shows a decline in sales or earnings. Um, it could be the death of an owner that changes things in the business. Um, it could be, you know, a, a fire or flood or some other tragedy. And believe me, the banks will, will stick with you through a tragedy. Um, they will, and they'll help you out. But there comes a point, if you don't have enough money put aside for those, um, there comes a point. Uh, banks aren't going to go down with you. Um, you know, they want to, you know, if they're going to, if you're, if you're not going to pay off a loan, they want to make sure that they liquidate it while you have some, some money, some cash. So anyway, um, you know, they're, they're there to help you, but there's a point where they will cut you off. I remember I had a client, well, I had many clients, but I just, just didn't have just that one. But anyway, it's a friend from high school, and uh, we weren't that great of friends, but but we, we knew each other. He had a nice little small business, and uh, uh, talked him into moving his account, Star Bank, and, and moving his uh, his loan, Star Bank. Um, and, and everything was really good. I mean, we, we did a lot of stuff together and everything, and uh, got, along, got along famously. Um, but, then uh, his business had kind of a rough patch. Uh, sales and earnings were down that one year, and and you know he, he kind of told me he was going to rebound the next year. He was changing things up, doing things a little different. And uh, you know it was about that time that my boss came up to me and said, "Hey, you know your buddy?" And I said, "Bill, yeah." And he said, "Hey, uh, tell him to find another bank." And just like that, I went from being his buddy to being a mean, cruel banker. Uh, needless to say, we weren't buddies anymore. Um, another problem that you can have is, is that companies, uh, you know, if they, if they start paying late, and that's not too bad as long as they clear it up before the 30-day late list. Uh, the 30-day late list is your, this is where the really bad companies are. And uh, most loan officers would do anything not to have their companies on the 30-day late. Because at the loan meeting, then, 
you know, they will sit there and at the, it's usually in the beginning or the end of the loan meeting and they will sit there and say, uh, hey, Roger, why, why is this company on the 30 day late? What's wrong? And you'll have to explain it. And if it isn't a good enough answer, then, you know, it's either, well, you know, maybe tell them to find another bank, you know, or something like that. So anyway, uh, most banks will call on their customers one to 15 days before, you know, when they become late, just to make sure they don't end up on that 30 day late list. I do remember I, I did have our, uh, one loan officer, and this was a bank I worked at, a pretty large bank, and he was one of the top two loan officers at that major bank. Uh, so anyway, um, uh, you know, I told you oh, we don't want customers on a 30 day late. It looks bad for your, for your, uh, for, for you as a loan officer. It looks bad for your customer. Um, so anyway, he had a customer that was going through, you know, some problems and uh, going to be on the 30 day late list. So a loan officer, and a lot of us didn't know this when it was going on. We only heard it after the fact. But anyway, the loan officer would go ahead and take money from the company's other accounts and cover that uh, loan temporarily, um, you know, until that 30 day late list came out. And then he would pay the money back, you know, replace the funds the next day. And then the, the company would be 30 days late again, but it wouldn't be on the 30 day late list. Um, they, uh, he was, he was a boss to the commercial lending workers. So they, they gladly would comply with whatever he told them to do. And, and a lot of times you had other reasons for doing something like that, for moving money around or whatever. And being up at the upper echelon of, of workers in that, of, of loan officers in that, in that bank, um, you know, they, they were used to him, you know, asking them to do kind of different stuff, but whatever, you know, as long as it's all legal. Um, but anyway, they, um, you know, they, they'd comply, you know, with whatever he wanted them to do. Um, his downfall was when he started taking money out of other companies' accounts to cover, to put, uh, to pay down the loan, uh, to make it not 30 days, and then the next day he would take it back out and put it back in that company. Well, I'm pretty sure that is illegal. And so anyway, needless to say, his subordinates finally turned on him, um, and then he was immediately fired the next day. Um, and this is somebody who could have been president of that bank. Um, he was that good. Um, and he was at that high a level. So anyway, um, why'd he do it? I, you know, I don't know. Pride, I guess. I guess he had worked with that company and, 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 and worked really hard to help them and, and really liked them and, and then just got caught. You know, you know, you do something for him and you do something for him and then it gets worse and worse and then all of a sudden you can't get out of it. So I'm thinking that's what it was. But anyway, um, you know, I don't think I would do that. I don't think many bankers would do that. They just let them go on the 30 day late list. Uh, so that's going above and beyond for the wrong reason. Um, it was a pretty unbelievable story when we heard it um, because the rest of the, of the bank heard it the day after he was fired. So anyway, in summary, your banker buddy is only your banker buddy when you're making money and everything's going good. Um, you know, he works for the bank. He makes money for the bank. Uh, so anyway, if the bank tells him to do anything, he may he may fight for you a little bit, but he's going to go ahead and do it. If they tell him to, to uh, tell you to find another bank, he's going to tell you to find another bank. Um, so anyway, um, you know, bankers, that, that's one of the things, I, you know, as a banker, I love to say yes, hated to say no, and really hated to tell somebody to go find another bank. Uh, so anyway, um, you know, and, and you have to do that as a loan officer. So they're, they can be pretty fickle. They can turn on a dime on you. So anyway, um, you know, I guess if, if you have a banker buddy, I'd be careful. And, uh, you know, and then too, as long as things are going good, just ride the wave because they, because they will treat you nice. Anyway, thank you very much. Um, you know, if you enjoy this kind of business content, not all loans, but business content, uh, please subscribe and, and hit the notification bell for future videos. And if you take anything away of value in this, I hope, hope you'll hit the, the uh, like button also. Anyway, um, thank you very much. I appreciate it, and I'll see you in the next video.